Well, how you doing, people? Today we're going to take a quick look at If. This movie was written and directed by and stars John Krasinski. Also starring Kaylee Fleming, Ryan Reynolds, and the voice talents of many, 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 many people. Fleming plays a girl named B, who has had some trouble in her life with the death of her mother and the recent hospitalization of her father, played by Krasinski. While her dad is awaiting some kind of heart operation, she goes to live with her grandmother for a bit, and while she's there, she discovers she can see imaginary friends. This is a little weird, considering most kids can only see their own imaginary friends, and most adults can't see them at all. That is, except for B's neighbor Cal, played by Reynolds, who has been helping to take care of these imaginary friends that have been abandoned by their now grown-up children. And the two of them set out on a quest to find new homes for these imaginary friends. Or ifs, if you will. I was lucky enough to attend an early screening for this movie, and if you're watching this, that means the review embargo has been lifted. I wasn't really sure what to expect with this one, and I came away with some mixed feelings. On the plus side, Krasinski definitely put his imagination into overdrive with this one. There is a wide variety of ifs of all shapes, sizes, and colors, some very cute, some very weird, and they all feel like things that a child would have created. And the whole movie has a very Roger Rabbit feel, with humans interacting with essentially cartoon characters. Most of the focus is on three ifs in particular. Blossom, a butterfly-like creature in a dancing costume. Lewis, an elderly teddy bear. And Blue, a huge, furry, and slightly stupid purple monster. Yes, his name is Blue and he's purple. His kid was colorblind. They are voiced respectively by Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Louis Gossett Jr., and Steve Carell, and I believe there's even a dedication to Gossett in the credits, as he passed away very recently. And all three of them do a very good job. Carell, in particular, was very funny. This is the kind of character that really plays to his strengths. But the casting also highlights a problem that I've mentioned before. Hollywood seems to be obsessed with having every freaking animated character played by a name actor instead of an actual voice actor. And for the life of me, I do not understand that. It's not that anyone did a bad job, mind you. I thought they were fine, but it just seems so pointless. There is a long list of ifs in this movie, and apart from the three I just mentioned, most of them you can count on one hand how many lines they have. And that makes it all the more baffling that they chose all these name actors. Is it really that much more valuable to have their names on the poster? This is a kid's movie. No kid is going to see this because Matt Damon is voicing the Sunflower. That said, there is a very funny gag in the credits about who voices Keith, who is an invisible imaginary friend that is never seen nor heard in the entire movie. I did get a kick out of that. As far as the human characters, I have seen a bit of Kaylee Fleming's work before. I believe she was Judith Grimes in The Walking Dead, and I know I saw her in a few episodes before I gave up on that show. B is 12 and has reached that age where she is far too cool for kid stuff. Several times in the movie, she tells people, I'm not a kid anymore. And of course, my first reaction is, you're 12. If your dad still drives you to school, you're a kid. Shut up. But that is very typical behavior for someone that age. You're not quite a teenager yet, but you're not exactly a little kid either. You're kind of caught between both worlds. Of course, I already knew Ryan Reynolds was a funny guy, and he's great in this. Cal has kind of become this reluctant caretaker for, I guess we can call them, retired ifs. He's endlessly frustrated by the whole thing, especially Blue, which I totally understand. He is kind of an idiot. And you can tell he genuinely wants to help them, but at the same time, he is so done with this. And in addition to acting annoyed all the time, Reynolds gets to do some physical comedy as well. He's quite good at that. As for the story, I liked a lot of it, but I'm not sure I really like where it ended up. And I'm gonna try to avoid any major spoilers here, but there may be some minor details thrown in, so you have been warned. Eventually, B and Cal help the Ifs try to track down their former kids, who are now grown-ass adults, and see if they can somehow reconnect with them. And this is a bit challenging, because the adults no longer believe in their imaginary friends, and it's tough to connect with someone that can't see or hear you. But they actually do find ways to help out their former kids, and the scene in particular where Blue helps his kid out is genuinely very touching. And I really like the idea that the ifs can still help their kids and have a positive impact in their lives, even if they can't necessarily interact with them the way they used to. That was great! And then at the end of the movie, they just kind of did away with that. And I really don't get why they did that. I may be overthinking this, this is a kid's movie, but it seemed to me like the path that they were on was totally fine, and then they do this course correction at the end for really no reason. There was also a really weird moment the first time B meets Cal, where he says something along the lines of, oh, the last time I saw you, you were this high. 
The same thing every adult tells a kid they haven't seen in years. But despite the fact that B appears not to know who Cal is, she never really questions how he knows her and just kind of goes along with it, which I thought was a very weird thing to do. One would think she would have asked at some point, by the way, how do you know me exactly? But she just doesn't. It also kind of telegraphs something about Cal, which I am not going to spoil here, but you can probably guess. Also, toward the end of the movie, there was some drama involving B's father that I just really was not buying. They were trying to suggest something bad had happened to him, but for some reason they were being really vague about the whole thing, and I do not know why. Maybe they just didn't want to scare the kids too much, I don't know, but it kind of took me out of the movie. I understand what they were trying to do. B has already lost one parent and doesn't want to lose another. I get it, but I don't think they stuck the landing. But despite some minor issues, I did enjoy If overall. It's creative and funny and has some genuinely heartwarming moments, and especially if you have kids, I highly recommend taking them to see this one. If you don't have kids, it's probably still worth seeing, but it's more of a wait-for-rental situation. And that's all I have to say about If. Till next time, take care.